！妈耶！瞧瞧，我的个天呀！哎呦妈呦！More than a million people have been forced to abandon their homes due to the remnants of a storm in Hebei Province, northeastern China, as officials warn it could take a month for water to recede in some areas. The ferocious super typhoon, with winds of 210 kilometers per hour, caused flooding and mudslides that submerged millions of homes. My God! Don't stand up, how? Too scary! Really, too scary! The subsequent rains drenched Taipei, a province of 75 million people, and the neighboring cities of Beijing and Taizhen. The enormous figure is equivalent to one of the most populous countries in the world. The natural disaster and flooding in these areas left residents trapped and swept away bridges and highways. <laughs> The storm also brought the heaviest rainfall Beijing has experienced in 140 years, marking a significant challenge for the region's ability to handle natural disasters, which experts warn will become more frequent due to climate change. State media reported that evacuated residents have been moved to temporary shelters in hotels and schools. Many of those displaced in Hebei, an industrial and agricultural hub that is home to many of Beijing's residents, were forced to abandon homes in areas where authorities opened dam spillways to relieve overflowing reservoirs and waterways. City authorities said on Saturday that at least 10 people had perished in boating, a large city in Hebei. Another 18 were reported missing. The rain in the city forced around 627,000 people to evacuate and affected over 1.1 million with the extent of damage from this natural disaster assessed as extremely severe. Thousands of homes have been damaged or destroyed. The economic losses caused by the storm are estimated to be around $2.2 billion. Around 1.5 million people have been evacuated from Hebei province, although it is unclear whether some residents in the areas under prior flood control were evacuated due to the heavy rains. About 883 towns and townships in 98 county-level districts of Hebei were hit by flooding. Among those displaced, over 960,000 were from reservoir and flood storage areas aimed at alleviating downstream flood impacts in Hebei, the Provincial Flood Control and Drought Relief Headquarters said on Saturday. A comment from a provincial official suggesting the Hebei floods were carried out to protect China's capital city sparked fierce backlash and debate about flood handling on social media. 
The Hebei Provincial Party Secretary was quoted in media calling for neighboring areas of Beijing to resolutely play the role of moat for the capital. While state media quoted other officials saying Hebei's drainage systems play a role in relieving pressure on the flood basin, it also dismissed the view that one area was flooded to preserve another. The natural disaster highlights the challenges the region faces. Located in the Haiye River Basin, where five rivers converge, when there is heavy rain and flash flooding. It is also the largest river system in northern China, with a total area of 265,000 square kilometers, including 180 million hectares. For high-risk cities located near mountains, in addition to addressing urban drainage and flood control, more attention needs to be paid to mitigating the risk of flash floods, including controlled release measures used to regulate water flow to minimize impacts on downstream areas, according to the Sun. Drainage system design standards in northern Chinese cities need further improvement to withstand the increasing frequency of extreme weather events caused by climate change. According to reports, the storm claimed at least 29 lives and caused billions of dollars in economic damage. State news agency Xinhua reported provincial reconstruction is expected to take two years to complete. State media China News Service said initially estimates put its direct economic losses at $13.2 billion. Preliminary estimate released show 3.9 million residents, equivalent to around 5% of the province's population, were affected by flooding and over 40,000 homes collapsed. More than 155,500 houses and facilities supplying power and communications were severely damaged. Hundreds of thousands of hectares of crops across the province were devastated. At least 21 people died and another six remain missing after flash floods and mudslides from torrential rains hit the outskirts of the city of Xi'an in northwest China, local authorities said on Sunday. According to Xi'an's Emergency Management Bureau, the natural disaster which struck a mountain village on Friday also knocked out power to 900 households and damaged roads, bridges and communications infrastructure. Authorities said nearly 1,000 rescue workers were deployed to Weiseping village in Xi'an following the mudslide and flash flood with 186 people evacuated so far and relief efforts still underway. Two houses were also destroyed. Upstream reservoirs had reached high water levels and needed emergency discharges while downstream rivers also faced limited flood handling capacity.
On September 3, 2023, authorities and residents in Taiwan were dealing with the aftermath of Typhoon Haiku, which dumped torrential rain across Taiwan. Over 7,000 people were evacuated from high-risk areas, hundreds of flights were cancelled and businesses were shuttered in preparation for Typhoon Haiku. Thousands of households lost electricity throughout the days. The storm swept past southern and eastern Taiwan, although half had been restored by nightfall. By 9 p.m., the typhoon had weakened to a moderate level and was near the southwestern Taiwanese city. Sustained winds were around 126 km per hour, according to the Central Weather Bureau office. Authorities reported over 40 injured from the storm, including at least two on the mountains. The typhoon also triggered the highest alert near Hong Kong in southern China before weakening into a tropical storm. On September 30th, the skies over New York and New Jersey were gloomy as the dark clouds enveloped them, bringing an unprecedented flood. Two of the largest and most vibrant states in the U.S. found themselves submerged in water, presenting enormous challenges not only in the terms of infrastructure but also human resources. In these crucial moments, the quality and speed of response from both the authorities and the community to this severe weather will determine everything. The aftermath of the heavy rain led to an emergency situation in both states. In the northwest region of New Jersey, many cars remained submerged, demonstrating the terrifying power of the downpour. It's not just the flooding, but the rate of rainfall that has painted a picture of devastation. In some places, the floods resulted in vehicles getting stranded, streets being closed off, and travel delays. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy quickly responded to the situation. He stated that all 21 counties of the state are enduring severe weather conditions ranging from heavy rains to flash floods. Four person. Breaking open. State offices closed early, but essential and emergency workers continued their duties. In particular, areas in the north and center of the state are facing large amounts of rainfall leading to dangerous situations. New York, not to be outdone, is also grappling with a similar situation. Governor Kathy Hoxall declared a state of emergency across all of New York City, Long Island and the Hudson Valley. Heavy rainfall resulted in many events being cancelled. For instance, the opener between the Phillies and Mets in Queens was called off. Rain engulfed the New York metropolitan area with astounding force on Friday. 
collapsing some subway and commuter rail lines, stranding drivers on highways, flooding basements and shutting down terminals at LaGuardia Airport for hours as one of the city's wettest days in decades. Immediate attention turned to the residents living in flood-prone areas. Two years after the remnants of Hurricane Ida caused basement flooding that killed 11 people in Queens. Many of those apartments, often rented to immigrants or others in need of affordable housing, are not legally permitted for rental and lack adequate means of escape during flooding. Advice for all? Plan your exit route. Don't wait for the water to be knee deep before moving. Don't wait till it's too late. According to weather officials and the city, nearly seven inches of rain had fallen in parts of Brooklyn by midday, with at least one location receiving two and a half inches in just an hour. Streets in Windsor Terrace in Brooklyn, a neighborhood built on a hillside, were submerged within minutes under flowing water speckled with white ice sheets right as schools were opening their doors. Boys and girls waded through the deep water on 11th Avenue to get to the elementary school while neighbors tried to clear thick fallen leaves from the storm drains using rakes. By the end of the day, the overall attendance rate in the public schools had dropped about 77% after hovering around 90% earlier in the week. Notably, several dozen schools across Brooklyn saw over 40% of the students absent. Scenes of both calm and tension played out across the city depending on how heavy the rainfall was. Waist-deep rivers form beneath the arched bridges in Central Park. The storm wreaked havoc on the busiest streets and highways, flooding sections of the FDR Drive and shutting down the Belt Parkway. Hoboken, a frequently flooded area, saw conditions deteriorate further. Mayor Ravi Bala urgently advised residents to stay indoors as the situation was expected to worsen. Although no casualties were reported in Hoboken, local fire departments responded to numerous calls, mainly to pump water from flooded basements. Heavy rain transformed Madison Street in Hoboken into a large pond, and many local residents witnessed the harrowing sight of vehicles stranded in water. Central Park recorded nearly six inches of rain in just an hour, setting a new record. These records were not only broken in the city, but also at John F. Kennedy International Airport. Daily commuters faced difficulties as train lines were disrupted and flights were cancelled. While sea levels are rising everywhere, they pose a prominent threat to New Yorkers. 
By the city's own estimates, they have risen one foot over the past 100 years and are predicted to rise about six feet above current levels by the end of this century. According to New York City's risk reduction guidelines, by 2050, sea levels could be 12 to 21 inches higher. And if the water doesn't rise from below, it will fall from above. The climate crisis has made excessive rainfall more severe, making floods even more likely. The city's infrastructure needs to be upgraded, with combined sewer and stormwater systems being sufficient to handle the massive amounts of water when storm seasons arrive. Please leave your discussion comments below the video comment section. Thank you very much for your keen interest, follow-up, and enthusiastic support. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. For now, we say goodbye and look forward to seeing you in our next videos. Wishing everyone a warm day with your family.